All right, so um, yeah, so again, I'm Jeremy. I'm a product manager for DB SQL AI Functions and Performance. I have two of the engineers for AI Functions here as well uh, who can answer all the questions uh, after we're done. Uh, so let me just get things started. First, as normal, product safe harbor statement. Um, but so what we did is um, the next opportunity for DB SQL, we believe, is going to be helping analysts who want to use machine learning. We interviewed over 150 uh, customers, and the 150 customers gave a resounding sentiment that, they want, that the analysts wanted to leverage more ML, they wanted to have deeper insights, they wanted to, to do better analysis, and they wanted to have easier workflows. But the problem that we kept hearing repeatedly is that there's just not an easy way to do this. There's not an easy way to do this in SQL because there's not a, a batch way to use ML across hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of rows. Uh, at best, uh, it would require a third-party tool, and often they had to take the uh, data that they had, move it over to Python, and then build custom code around rate limiting, et cetera. Uh, and so what we set out to do in AI functions is we wanted to deliver access to AI that any analyst can use regardless of their AI skill level. If they know SQL, then they should be able to use AI in DB SQL. And so what we wanted to build a solution to do is to have ready-to-use models in SQL syntax. We wanted to use state-of-the-art model, state models in our uh, functions. We wanted to have infrastructure tuning and fitting all created by the Databricks uh, ML engineers and data scientists, the same ones who are building the Mosaic AI platform. And we wanted it to be fully managed and out of the box. And so this led to uh, DB SQL AI functions, which is our out-of-the-box uh, suite of functions to call ML models. Uh, right now, it's a range of, of out-of-the-box uh, functions that have a variety of use cases. We're going to go through some of those. Uh, it, this, these functions are expanding quarterly. It's fully managed, meaning that we handle all the problems that we discovered during our customer discovery phase, such as rate limiting, et cetera. And this is being used today by some of Databricks' largest customers. And we have uh, functions that can do everything from calling custom models, state-of-the-art LLMs like GPT-4, DBRX, text classification, sentiment analysis, and more. And um, I'm not as brave to do a live demo, so I have a recorded demo here. And what I'd like to do is show you uh, how uh, users can use, how analysts can use AI functions. So what I did is I created some fake tweets, uh, generated that data, has ID in the date column, and I'm simply going to call the AI analyze sentiment. I'm going to drop the tweet column in, and within a matter of a few seconds, we're going to be able to get the sentiment back on these tweets. A few seconds. All right, now we've got the sentiment back. It is positive, negative, neutral, and then we can easily now call AI Classify. And these are, these are going to get pretty impressive as time goes. So let's start off with just the basics right now. But we're going to have AI Classify. Again, I'm going to drop the tweet in. I'm going to have an array that I'm going to just pass the different names of these, four, of these functions in, from forecast to AI query to vector search. Of course, I'm going to have an other in here as well. And once we have this function finished, uh, or the syntax finished, and we run it, it's going to hit two AI endpoints. It's going to call the analyze sentiment and the classify endpoints, and we're going to get the results back. I wanted to show both just to kind of give you an idea of how fast these are already. All right. Uh, I think it's 16, 17 seconds or so that it takes. Um, so, okay, we've got back the sentiment and the function used with just four lines of code. And now I want to know a little bit deeper. I want to have a pivot table. So I'm going to literally just create a pivot table here. I'm going to pass in my columns, or my function used and my sentiment. And I'm going to be able to get a breakdown within four lines of code of, all right, so you know all of this is positive. I generated this as fake data. But uh, there, there are some neutral in here as well that were generated. All right, uh, let's see. So uh, that's the basics of how it works. And now I want to talk about a few announcements and show some features off. So the three things that we're announcing for DB SQL AI functions today is that we have increased the speed 10x from where we were just a couple of months ago for calling custom models and LLMs. I'll give you a demo of what that looks like in just a moment. Uh, we also are announcing that we're releasing a time series forecasting function and a vector search function to take advantage of, oh God, it did it again. Um, hold on one second, let me, uh, 
I don't know what's going on with this setup. <laughs> all right, so while that's happening, all right, it just works automatically. All right, so um, now let's talk about the 10x performance increase first. So uh, you can now qu query custom models and LLMs, but 10x faster. I wrote 10x plus here because our benchmarks actually were over 10x uh, uh, in, our, in our most recent tests. Um, and the way we're doing this is just the way that Databricks SQL's engines are fast. The same engineers who worked on the engine are working on the LLM, to, or, or sorry, are working on the algorithms to make these uh, functions faster. We're using a lot of the plays out of just the, the basic Spark playbook by using parallelization, batch APIs, multi-threading. And this is for calling, again, custom models and LLMs. This is rolling out now to general availability. I want to show everyone, just kind of get an idea of, of what this looks like. If we delete the, the two functions that we called, and we're going to call AI query, I'm going to pass in the DBRX instruct model. And I'm going to ask a simple question of the tweets, which is going to be, what is the use case uh, of these tweets? Just for the sake of time, I'm going to just skip forward just a little bit. So what is the primary use case of these tweets? I'm going to pass in the tweet after using a concat function. And again, this is 100 rows. Uh, and I'm going to just run the query really quick. And you can see we get back the results in about 11 seconds. Uh, we get 100 rows of inference, or return through an LM through inference. To give you an idea, we're, about, we're a little bit north of 100 milliseconds now, um, and we're planning to make this even faster in the future. All right, next is Mosaic AI's vector search is now going to be available to call from DB SQL. Um, so Mosaic has a best-in-class vector search and data retrieval. Um, it performs state-of-the-art uh, KNN search across the data index, which and the vector search is up to 100 million records. Um, and you can create an easy out-of-the-box rag, and I'm going to show you how that works. Uh, so here we have uh, the, the, the syntax, very simple, vector search, you call the index, you call the query that you want, and you say the number of uh, query results that you want. Here's the same code that you just saw. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, what are retail users like about the AI query function that we have from this, from this uh, fake tweet data. I'm going to return that. You're going to see the results come back in about three seconds, which is great. But the problem now is, is that all right, I've got some relevant documents, but I really want to take it to the next level. So I'm going to run collect lists on this vector search, which is going to combine all of these rows into just one array. And then I'm going to combine these arrays, or yeah, this array, into just one string. So I've got array join, collect list, now all my data is in one string. And now I'm going to pass in AI gen. And this is going to call a mixtral model. I think this is mixtral 8b. And I'm going to ask the same question that I have in my vector search. What do retail users like about AI query? I'm going to pass that directly into the to the LLM with now the tweet data. And within just seven lines of code, uh, and one of them being a blank space, I now have a, L a RAG model calling an LLM with uh, summarization. Let me just run this. All right, and so now if we expand this, you can see, oops, let me skip back to that. Sorry about that. All right, so now you can see the result. Uh, the LLM return simplifies the, the, what a customer's like about, retail users like about AI query. It simplifies the process of identifying top selling products. It streamlines the process of finding best sellers, you know, et cetera. This is literally seven lines of code. Uh, it's, very, it's at your fingertips. You can use this, uh, you know, you can use this as soon as the preview is enabled for your uh, workspace. All right, next is uh, built-in time series forecasting. So this function is, 
what it does is it uses multiple, it evaluates multiple models and parameters on the fly uh, to be able to extrapolate a, ti a, a time series. You can set it easily by just adding the time series that you want to have here is the horizon. Um, and it, again, it evaluates multiple models behind the scenes. Let me give you a quick demo of what that looks like. So I wanted to give you kind of a basic uh, you know, idea of how this works. So if you look, look here, I have, uh, I created some fake data. Uh, this is just fake revenue data. It just it increments from January the 1st at 10,000 linearly up to um, uh, April 1st to 15,000. I'm just going to pass that data in. I'm going to set a time horizon of 531, and I'm going to call AI forecast. Now, once I hit run, the models are going to be evaluated. The parameters are going to be evaluated behind the scenes, and we're going to get back a um, time series forecast that includes the predicted values, upper and lower values. Now this specific set, data set is fake, so the, uh, it's linear, so the upper and lower values are all gonna be the same, but I wanna just demonstrate how easy it is to use this. All right, uh, so these, uh, we're general availability for the 10x speed increase, it's rolling out now. Um, the vector search is in public preview, and time series forecasting is also in private preview. Um, if you'd like, uh, you can use this QR code. There's a form here. You can fill this out, and we'll get your, get your workspace added in and uh, get you started. I'll leave this up just for a, a couple of seconds more just so you can get, your, get the QR code. If uh, that uh, text is interfering with it, I will open it up afterwards so that everybody can see it. Sorry about that. I didn't realize that the closed captioning was going to mess it up. All right. All right, so I'm gonna to move to the next slide. And now, just quickly, we're gonna talk about roadmap. So this is kind of where we're going next. So you saw that we're north of 100 milliseconds for AI query and calling these custom LLMs. What uh, the next step is we wanna go from fast to blazing fast. We think we can make some uh, large improvements from where we're at today. Uh, so when you have the use case that's calling hundreds of thousands of rows or tens of thousands of rows, you should be able to get back very snappy, quick results. The second thing is we're moving to more simplified user journeys. So now you can see that you can call AI analyze function or AI query, sorry, AI analyze sentiment. Uh, but we want to make those simpler. We want to make those look, work more like a Python UDF, uh, where they will be very simple, easy, out-of-the-box functions to use. And then we're going we're to be investing heavily in explaining model results. So right now you can get forecast results, but we're going to be investing heavily in, OK, how did we come up with that result? What was the model that was used? and being able to explain that inside of uh, functions inside of, the, uh, inside of AI forecast and, and the other models as well. All right, uh, I'm gonna show the QR code just one more time in case anybody wants to sign up for any of the previews. Uh, again, just sign up for that and we will uh, be in touch and get you registered for it. Thanks everyone.